Today, I want to talk about friend loop trees, which are a data structure that solves range sums with updates. Uh, so previously, we looked at range sums without updates, which we can just use a prefix summary for. Uh, but updates, meaning we can actually change the values, uh, you can't use a prefix sum for it. Uh, because you know, if you update an element at the beginning of the array, that affects like all of the later prefix sums. So it takes a little bit of time to do updates, even though the queries are very fast. Uh, so Fender trees are a data structure with very short code that gives us login for updates and queries. Uh, unfortunately, it's also quite hard to understand, but it's like 10 lines of code. It's very unclear what that 10 lines of code is doing. Uh, so that's mainly what I'm going to try and explain in this video is uh, sort of the logic behind it. Um, but so, yeah, just to be clear, they, they solve basically this problem. Uh, add to a value. This is set instead of add, but we'll see it's the same thing. And like query uh, the sum of range. Actually, it'll be the sum of the prefix. But as we talked about with prefix sums, you know, this range is just the difference of the prefix ending at b minus the prefix ending at a minus 1. So range and prefix are the same to sum. OK, so uh, here's my notes on primary trees. Uh, okay. So the main idea, right, so we have some array that we want to do prefix sums of, uh, which we're going to one index. Right? And usually, we're not going to zero index. Uh, and so the main idea is that uh, we're going to keep an array that is the Fenwick tree. Uh, and the i element is going to store some sum that ends at i. And the length of that sum is going to be the least significant bit of i. So if you wrote out i in binary, uh, what would be the smallest power of 2? So if i is odd, like f i is just i itself. Um, if i is even, but it has uh, a 2 in its binary representation, that is, it's 2 mod 4, then the length will be 2. Um, so the sums of the segments go in this pattern. You know, 1 uh, is the sum of 1 element, 2 is the sum of 2 elements, 3 is an odd, so it's the sum of 1 element, 4 is uh, 0 mod 4, so it's the sum of 4 elements, 1, 2, 1, 8, 1, 2, 1, 4, 1, 2, 1, 16, and then it would be 1, 2, 1, 4, 1, 2, 1, 8, and so on. Uh, so the key property of this that ends up being important is that if you're at a given position, uh, the number of that position, right, right, which I mean the least significant bit, tells you how far you go in each direction to get to the next higher power of 2. So from a 1, if you step one space in either direction, you get to the next higher power of 2. From a 2, you need to step two spaces in each direction to get the next higher power of 2. From a 4, you need to step 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces in each direction to get the next power of 2. Um, so that's the key property to keep in mind. Uh, and so how do we do uh, prefixes? You know, how do, so the, the query that we're supposed to support is a prefix sum. Um, and so the way that, that works is uh, we jump backwards following the rule that I mentioned. Right? You always jump as far uh, as the length of your current sum um, until you reach the beginning of the array, basically. Uh, and so why does that make sense? Like, let's say you're here. So this has the sum of these two elements. And then you jump to here. And this has the sum of these four elements. And then you're done. Uh, so you're jumping backwards, you're doing increasing uh, steps each time, and you're sort of covering all of the elements. Um, right? This has a sum of two, you know, the preceding two elements, so when you jump here, you, know, you, you haven't skipped anything. Uh, so the prefix ends up being a sum of powers of two. Uh, that you're adding as you jump backwards. Um, and how do we do updates? Uh, instead of jumping backwards, we actually jump forwards. Um, but it's the same property, right? We should jump forward to the next power of 2 
you just advance by your current length. Um, and so why does that make sense? Well, so let's say we want to update like this value. What sums is this contained in? Well, obviously, uh, the Fenwick uh, index at i um, always ends in i itself. So fine, it's there. And then we jump forward. Right? So it's not here, because this is only the sum of one element. But it is here, because this is the sum of eight elements, you know, which includes three back. Uh, these are all too small. Right? Even this four only goes back to here. So it doesn't get back here. So the next thing that's going to include it is the next power of 2 after 8, which is 16. Um, and so it, it turns out that like exactly the elements that include it are just the elements that you get by walking forward using these, these lengths. Uh, so the query, or the update, is sort of the opposite of the query. Uh, the update is it's just that you walk forward you know, skipping the lengths every time. The query is you walk backwards, skipping the length every time. Um, and so what's really nice about this is uh, how simple the code is. Um, OK, so how do you compute the length is an important thing, given that you had some index. Uh, so it's actually really simple. It's one line. Um, this line is very confusing, though. Uh, so let's try and explain it. So what are we trying to do? We said we were trying to isolate the smallest power of 2 in the binary representation of n. Uh, right, so if you wrote out n in binary, what is the last one, the one closest, you know, the, the ones place? Uh, and we're going to figure out you know, 2 to that power. Right? What is the value represented by that one? Um, and so this is, you can use some like bit twirling tricks. Uh, so and um, is a bit operation, a single and. So it means A and B, it means write A and B in binary, and the result has a 1 only if they both have a 1. So this gives you, you know, a 1 if only if n and minus n both have a 1. Uh, why, what does minus n mean in terms of bit operations? Uh, well, it means this. Uh, minus n is equivalent to uh, not n, which just means flipping all the zeros to ones and ones to zeros and then adding one. Uh, so why is that, by the way? It's because of the way that we represent negative numbers, which is two's complement. Uh, right, so the key property that you want of a negative number is this, right, that they add to zero. Um, and so the idea behind two's complement is if you pick the right bit pattern, you sort of get that for free. And so like, what is the right bit pattern? Well, suppose you want to negate this number. You start by flipping all the bits. And now if you added these two numbers, you get all ones. And if you add one to that, then you get all zeros. Right? Maybe you get a one on the beginning, but that goes away because there's no space for it. So you just get all zeros. And so that's the idea of two's complement is that you flip it and add one, and then when you add them together, you get all ones plus one, which is zero. Uh, so it, like, the way that we represent negative numbers relies on this wraparound effect, because we only use limited bits for our integers. Um, which is that if you take all ones, you know, however long your integer is, like 64 bits, you take 64 ones, and then you add one, you get all zeros. Uh, and then you get a 65th bit, which is 1, but that gets ignored because of overflow. And so you end up with 0, uh, which is really a nice, nice property. Um, so that is why negative n is the same thing as not n, flipping all the bits of n plus 1. OK, so what is n and negative n? Now that we understand what negative n means, it's bit uh, Well, so you flip all the bits. So if you took the and of you know, n and not n, you would always get zero, right? Because there's no one in both places you flipped all the bits. But when you add one, uh, that, say there's like zero here, you add one, 
and it sort of carries to all of your initial ones, which are all of your zeros in the original thing, uh, until you get to uh, what was the first one in the original, which is now a zero, and that turns into a one, and everything else, and now the carrying stops. Uh, so that's why this isolates the first one bit uh, of n, it's because adding one uh, does a carry until you get back that first one bit. Uh, that's all it does. You know, then, the, then the carrying stops. And so all of the bits after that first one bit uh, are still um, So that's how this function works to extract uh, the smallest one bit from n. And that is the length of all uh, of like the sum for that element of the tree. Um, so, yeah, that's the idea of friendly trees. Um, and so, why is it fast? Uh, well, all of the queries. Like, so the point is that we're always jumping to higher powers of two, right? And we're going to run out pretty quick. Uh, right? If you're sort of multiplying by two, right? so like the total distance that we traverse during a query is like the length of that prefix. And if it only takes log n powers of two, they're increasing to build out, you know, to exceed that prefix. Right? Uh, similarly, for the updates, um, we're actually going right instead of left, but anyway, we're not going to cover more than... Sorry, we're increasing power to 2 again, so uh, we're not going to cover more than the entire array. Uh, so it's still log in time. Um, so that's the idea of family trees. It's pretty confusing, I think, but the code actually ends up being really uh, short in this. So let's do the problem now that we understand the data structure. Um, so we're given, oh yeah, so one thing I didn't mention, we're given some initial array, uh, but I didn't talk about how to initialize this data structure. But that's fine, actually. You can start with it all zeros, which you don't do any initialization. But then, you know, all the, these, each of these elements is some sum of some elements. And A is all zero, then F is also going to be all zero. Uh, and then you can just do an update for every element in the initial array, uh, right? Start with L0 and then add 3 to position 0 and 2 to position 1 and 4 to position 2 and so on. Uh, so you, you don't need to do any initialization. You can just do the update as an issue. You, know, you can do the initialization with the updates with the API. Um, yeah, so let's do it. So let's initial array and then we have these queries. Uh, so Vector. Q, Q, Q. Um, I'm going to define a class for this. Why not? So because it's one index, we need n plus one elements. Like the index is just sort of one through n. Yes. 
to or something some way. Yep. Okay, so we just need to actually fill in uh, the operations of the primary tree. So the really the great thing about Fender Trees is that uh, the actual code here for doing the add and the queries is really what, uh, right. It's literally just four lines, you know, five lines, six lines. Um, it's kind of confusing code uh, if you don't understand what's going on because it's so. Basically, it takes it takes a lot of advantage of like the way that bit operations work uh, to be really short. Um, maybe it's worth memorizing, um, but you know it is possible to understand what's happening. Uh, the key idea is just that every element stores a sum of this length, and when we want to uh, query things. You go to the left. Whenever you move, so you always move by this line. So to query, you always go to the left. Uh, you go to the left, and to add, you go to the right. Um, and uh, this is probably just worth memorizing, um, although you can't understand the logic. Uh, why this extracts the, the lowest bit. Um, like I talked about earlier. Uh, but yeah, this is a nice data structure to know, um, just because the code is, is so simple. Uh, and hopefully uh, the idea makes sense. I, I didn't understand the idea for a long time when I found this. Um, I didn't really like these. I thought they were too complicated. But the idea is not actually too simple. Um, need to understand a little bit about 
of bits, uh, you know, bit operations, I guess, uh, and also uh, this idea that scoring uh, these significant bit, uh, number of elements, some ending in i at each index, uh, makes things very good. Uh, so that's kind of piece. 